Good morning. I'd like to talk to you today about new beginnings. The Jewish people were waiting for a new beginning. They were waiting for a Messiah. Uh, the prophets had said that around this time, uh, the Son of God was going to come. The, there was going to be a Son of Man. The Messiah would come. And so they were expectant and they were awaiting a new beginning. And then John appears at the edge of the wilderness uh, and he's calling people to a new beginning. He's calling people to a baptism of repentance. Now, repentance is something that we sometimes uh, struggle to understand. I've seen people sort of get the idea that repentance is, <clears throat> is feeling desperately bad and desperately miserable about what we've done. But in actual fact, repentance is about a change of direction. If I'm on a journey somewhere, and it has happened in the past, I'm going in completely the wrong direction. There's no point making small course changes. If I'm heading in completely the wrong direction, and this happens on motorways, doesn't it? Uh, you, you can miss your junction, and immediately you miss your junction, you are heading in completely the wrong direction. And the only way back is, is to actually get to the next junction, turn turn completely round and come back the opposite way. Uh, and so this is what a baptism of repentance is about. It's about recognising that we're going in completely the wrong direction, and then a complete turn around to head in a different direction and so for for the jewish people this was their new beginning and that a lot of the understanding about faith a lot of the understanding about religion was completely wrong <clears throat> and that god had a complete change of direction a new way for them to go forward and so for jesus as well this also marks a new beginning up until this point in Jesus' life jesus is probably around 30 years old and we know very little about Jesus's first 30 years. We know items from his childhood, we know uh, a few things about his birth, uh, we know about when he was 12 and then he got lost in the temple. But beyond that, we, we know very little of Jesus's life. And so Jesus's life up until this point has been relatively lived in obscurity, it's been lived out of the limelight. And yet now Jesus enters a, a new beginning. Jesus himself has a new beginning. And uh, it starts off with an act of obedience because God leads him to go to the Jordan and to start his new beginning by getting baptised. Matthew, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew has John questioning Jesus saying, why are you getting baptised? You know, I need to be baptised by you. And, and yet you come to me, this, this, this doesn't make sense to John because John is aware that his baptism is a baptism of changing direction. And, and Jesus doesn't need to change direction. He is the new beginning. But John, Jesus says to John, let it be so for now. Let it be so to fulfil all righteousness. And when Jesus gets baptised, he identifies with us. He's getting baptised from a different reason from us. We get baptised to mark our new beginning. But Jesus is getting baptised. He's identifying with us. Uh, sometimes when I go and watch my football team, I wear my football team shirt. It's not saying I'm a member of the team, but I'm identifying with my team by wearing their shirt. And so Jesus, likewise, and I know many of you will identify with your team by wearing your shirt, your scarf, your hat, whatever, uh, to identify with the team that you want to support, that you want to encourage, that you want to help. And so Jesus identifies by his new beginning, he identifies with us. He gets baptised and becomes, as it were, one with us. Jesus obeys God and this is the pathway to his new beginning. And so just very briefly this morning, what is the Holy Spirit leading you to? What is your new beginning? What little nudge has perhaps God been giving you and said, this year, 2021, needs to be a year of new beginning. New beginnings sometimes mean that in changing direction, we have to change our behaviour. If I said that I was uh, going to start getting up at five o'clock in the morning, there's no point in me just saying I'm going to get up at five o'clock in the morning. I have to change my behaviour so that so that I can prepare to get up at five o'clock in the morning. Now, I, I think that's very important to have eight hours sleep. So if I want to get up at five o'clock in the morning, I would always go, go to bed as near nine o'clock the night before as possible so that I had a, a halfway chance of getting up at five. Um, and, and so it, the, the, I would change my behaviour to make the new beginning possible. And so I wonder, 
As we begin 2021, as you reflect perhaps on the new beginning that the Jewish people were waiting for, as you think about the new beginning that John the Baptist was offering people, a baptism of repentance, a baptism of changing direction, uh, as you think about Jesus with his new beginning by his obedience to God, and then his direction completely changed, and his ministry went from private to a public ministry. What new beginning might the Holy Spirit be leading you to today? What what small step, or maybe what big step, what change of direction might you need to make so that 2021 will be the best year yet? Will mark um, will will be the year that that, that completely and utterly transforms your life where some of your obstacles change into opportunities, where some of your stumbling blocks become stepping stones. So, will you respond to God this this year, as we start this new year? If God's giving you a nudge, let me encourage you. Do what he says. When Jesus turned the water into wine, uh, his mother says to the servants, whatever he tells you, do it. That's a really good advice. For 2021. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for my friend. I pray that you give them the courage that if you are giving them a nudge at the moment, that whatever you're telling them to do, they would do it. Amen. Have a very blessed day.